What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. You know, at this point, I would say the Clippers are definitely looking towards the buyout. Um, the buyout is probably the best option they have if they're actually looking to find another piece. And as I said yesterday in yesterday's video, Jerry West was looking for another impactful player. And to find that, I guess you're going to have to go through the buyout because yesterday in the trade deadline, they didn't acquire anybody. I am not too happy with the fact that they just basically gave Serge Ibaka away. And actually, they gave him to the, the champs. They gave him to a team that won the championship last year. You basically made the Milwaukee Bucks a better team. If Ibaka goes on there and balls out, I mean, now they have an, uh, another big man that can stretch the floor in which they already have Brooke Lopez. Now, Brooke Lopez is injured. I do, we do know that. He has not played in a while, but at the same time, he's going to come back. And then you have him on the floor. You have Serge Ibaka as maybe his backup for a little while. I mean, that's a hell of a backup to have, Serge Ibaka, because both of those players basically do the same thing, except one is more athletic than the other. You know, Serge Ibaka is a little more athletic than uh, Brooke Lopez, but both of them can stretch the floor, shoot, knock down shots, and both of them play uh, significant defense you know well of course you know Brooke Lopez doesn't play that great of defense but he still is a rim he, he's still a big body in the paint so he can alter some shots that comes in there Serge Ibaka a little bit better defender of course but still that just basically made the Bucks a more upgraded better team than what they were if they get a healthy Serge Ibaka who goes out there and plays the way he can I mean I just felt like that was a bad move for the Clippers and I do understand why they did it though because um they're trying to, you know, open up more room, you know, cap space room, more money, have more money available. So when the buyout happens, which is today, they can ready, they could be ready to put their bid in and have a roster spot open for that to happen. So I get what they did, but I just don't like what they did because to me, like I said, when you trade away high IQ players like that, you're, you're, you're lessening your chances of, you know, winning a championship unless you replace him with somebody who has the same IQ that he has as far as winning, you know, or being a part of a winning organization. So, you know, things like that come back to haunt a team after a while. Now, I've said before, you know, the Clippers, you know, um, the point guard position is something they need to look into. But, you know, right now they're thin on the um, the center position because, you know, if you're depending on Zubak and, um, you know, Hardenstein to just, you know, be there 100 percent healthy the whole time and to play on the level that surge can, you know, as far as um, versatility, jump shot, stepping out, knocking down threes, playing defense on the other end. You know that you, you might you might have made a mistake there because they're not exactly developed like Serge Ibaka is. And, you know, I saw a few games these last few games. Serge Ibaka was playing better. You know, he was, you know, I feel like he was getting healthier and getting back to his ways a little bit. But I mean, all that doesn't matter now. You know, he's gone. He's with Milwaukee now. And, you know, it it um, it sads me because, like I said, you know, players like that. I just don't feel like you should let players like that go. I mean, you, you, you let him go, but you, you, you keep Marcus Morris. I don't I, I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? I just th that's just me, though. You know, I'm not you know, if anybody else feels any differently, I respect your opinion. I really do. But I don't see how they let go of Serge Ibaka and don't get rid of Marcus Morris. Marcus Morris has been one of the most inconsistent, if not the most inconsistent players on the Clippers. And, you know, he has games where he plays well, but he has a lot of games where he plays questionable. And, you know, that's just not good enough if you're trying to win. And like I said, you know, Marcus Morris is good. But at the same time, you know, uh, I feel like Norman Powell and Robert Covington makes up for what he does. So, I mean, that's just my opinion, but I just feel like they should have kept Serge because they're a big man rotation. You need at least three uh, big men, three de three decent centers that you can count on because if one get injured, you need two. You still need two of them to back them up. 
or should I, or should I say you, you need two because one, you know, has to sit down, other one has to sub in, things like that. So to me, that three headed monster they had in the center position, I thought that was really a good thing, even though I know Serge Ibaka wasn't really happy with the minutes he was getting. But I mean, they could have sat down with Serge or something like that and, you know, negotiated with him or say, hey, we're going to use you more in the playoffs once you get healthier, you know, stuff like that. But I don't think you should have just gave him away and didn't really get anything in return and hoping that the buyout market is going to get you somebody, you know, that that can uh, that that can replace him. Now, I'm not saying it can't because maybe just maybe the buyout market will get them, you know, somebody that um, that's that's replace worthy of Serge Ibaka. Maybe it will. I mean, maybe, you know, that they'll find somebody out there who can replace him and maybe they might get Goran Dragic from what I'm hearing, you know, but at the same time, I think that that center position is definitely uh, a, a position they need to look into because I don't know if you can count on Zubak every night to put up the points and play to the production and the level that he should because he really hasn't shown that up until this point. He has games where he has eight points, 10 points, you know, minimal rebounds, just like he did last night against Dallas and their loss against Dallas. So, I mean, it's like you don't have a big man you really can depend on to give you, you know, uh, 16 17 points a game with about nine nine to ten rebounds and maybe three blocks and Serge Ibaka can still do that you see what I'm saying so it's like between Hardenstein and Zubak I mean I guess you can get that production out of them consistently but it's hard to really say that when Zubak doesn't play the level he should and Hardenstein is still on a one-year contract still trying to prove himself even more even though he has been you know an uh, impressive guy you know as far as like you know coming out there playing the way he does I uh, have been impressed by him but to ask him to do that in the NBA playoffs when the games get really really tight when it really really means something you know I haven't seen him play to that level and, to, and until you see him play on that platform form it's hard to say what he can be and what he can do that because that's what every player is personified but personified by every player is personified by what they do in the playoffs and now if he can give you that in the playoffs that's great but we'll just have to see how that goes and how that pans out between him and zoo but um i, I don't know unless they get a, a a certified big man or something like that unless they got a christian wood or somebody like that you know what i'm saying that'd be the only way i think clipper nation overall would be happy because like i said you do need a, a good center in the paint or somebody who can hold down the paint some if you want to be a good defensive team you know and def defense wins championships so i mean you definitely need defense so giving away a defensive player like that you know what i'm saying definitely hurts and his iq is definitely um going to be missed with the clippers because as i said before he could have been a mentor to zubak and hardenstein just because of all that he knows and going out there showing it by example i think that's something that they should have thought about but i mean it's over and done with now so nothing we can do about that. But at the same time, you know, we'll just have to see what the buyout brings. You know, there is some players in the buyout. There is some players that I think uh, that might be, uh, you know, interest in, in for the Clippers. But we'll see what they what they decide to do, who they decide to bite on and um, who they decide to bring on the team. Because uh, right now, like I said, um, the big man position is thin. Um, they're still thinking about John Wall, I believe. And like I said, Dragic is still out there. I mean, there's still a couple other players out there in the buyout market. I mean, it's like I said, I, I don't know who they really can bring on that can make them a better team. I'm not exactly sure about that, but um, I guess they know what they're doing. And we're just going to ride with that, you know, because honestly, uh, like I said, they made their big splash. They did get Norman Powell and Robert Covington. They did do that. So you got to give. Uh, the Clippers organization credit for that they did make a splash but I still thought they needed one more impactful player to really kind of make them at least a playoff team because right now as I said they really can't afford to lose too many games because they are in the eighth seed and you know if you lose too many now you're looking at the ninth 10 seed and now you're definitely a, a play-in tournament team and then on top of that, I mean, you never know what happens after that. I mean, you're not sure about PG coming back. You're definitely not sure about Kawhi Leonard coming back. You know, you, you got to get another impactful player to me to at least better your chances of at least making the playoffs. Because hypothetically, if they made the playoffs and they were secured in, I think maybe, you know, Kawhi and PG both would make it back by then, possibly, you know, or at least or at least one of them, you know. So, I mean, it, it, it all 
I don't know. It all has to unfold right. We'll have to see how it does for the Clippers. But um, right now, like I said, I'm not sure about, you know, their chances. You know, I'm not. You know, I uh, they, they, they got they got to show me something in this buyout. We got to see, you know, what they acquire and um, just see what they can make out of it, you know, because what they have right now, uh, I think is good enough to make the playoffs. I feel like it is. But at the same time, like I said, losing certain players a lot of times it hurts the team's chemistry it hurts the locker room and especially if it's a good locker room presence type guy you see what i'm saying so sometimes a lot of those sometimes those situations hurt a team more than what even other fan even even other fans know because a lot of guys actually depend on that guy coming there every day you know um putting his arm around him saying hey it's gonna be all right we're gonna figure things out you know let's look at this here look at this there and then like i said you got some other players on the team that are used to that player mentoring them and this is why i said losing surge probably is a a, a big loss for them because he was probably mentoring you know Hardenstein and Zubak to play better and be better and now they don't have that and like I said you know it, it unless they get somebody to replace him and you know get get another impactful piece uh the Clippers might just be where, where might be where they are continuously hopefully just trying to fight to get to the playoffs unless one of their superstars or both of their superstars come back and help them make this run but um we'll see how it goes you know um Definitely see what they acquire in the buyout and definitely see what their plans are. Definitely see what the decisions they make because either way, Clippers Nation got to roll with it. But hey, that's my take on everything. You leave any comments in the comment section as always. And hey, Cali out.